If you have spent any amount of time working with LLMs, you may have come across the terms token and embedding, right? You might even have a sense of what they mean, right? They're like numbers that represent things or something. So in today's video, I'm gonna help explain what they are and how they're different, but stick around to the end because the really interesting stuff happens when you start to understand how they're related. We're gonna start with the term embedding, all right? Now, an embedding is just a vector that represents something. Now, what is a vector? Uh, it's just an array of numbers. That's really it, right? If you think of a X, Y coordinate, that's a two-dimensional vector. An X, Y, Z coordinate, that's a three-dimensional vector. And there's no limits to how many dimensions you can have, all right? Vectors are a fundamental mathematical concept that are useful in linear algebra, geometry, biology, graphics, all sorts of things, all right? But vectors are really just the mathematical concept. Embeddings are just vectors that mean something. Now, what do these embeddings actually represent? Well, technically anything. But today we're gonna focus on words because most likely the type of AI model that you and I interact with most often is gonna be an LLM, which is all about language. So how do arrays of numbers represent words? Well, there's a very famous example that exemplifies this very well. Consider the equation, King minus man plus woman equals queen. Now, even though that's not real math, it intuitively makes sense. But let's represent these words as vectors to see them in action. So here we have our words represented as vectors, okay? Just two dimensional vectors. If we start with the first part of our equation, we have king minus man. That gives us the vector zero, nine. Now, if we look at our list of embeddings, we can see that zero nine is, that's not a thing, right? We don't have a concept that labels zero nine, but let's keep going. So if we add zero nine to woman, we get nine nine, which is the vector for queen. In this very simple example, we are able to encapsulate the meaning of queen, king, woman, and man using two features. And we call these two dimensions but you can't really capture the full semantic meaning of a word with just two dimensions, all right? And so it's actually very typical for embeddings to have hundreds of dimensions. This is what allows them to have far more complex relationships with other words. Relationships with other words. We're gonna come back to that. Vectors and embeddings are concepts that you will see throughout machine learning, but tokens, all right, these are primarily associated with natural language processing and large language models. Similar to embeddings, tokens are numbers that represent words. But where an embedding might use hundreds of numbers to describe a word, a token is just one number. Wait a minute, if we could represent words as just a single number, why would, why, why would we even need embeddings? That's a very good question. Basically every word that a model is trained on gets cataloged and assigned its own unique number. This is more like an ID and it doesn't hold any semantic meaning. You could have technically numbers that are very close together of words that have nothing to do with each other. Each token then points to a specific embedding. So this token equals this embedding. So when you enter a prompt into say chat GPT, each word gets converted into a token, which gets converted into an embedding. And it's this embedding that the model works with to predict the next part of the sentence, AKA the response to your prompt. But there's something missing here. This is where we're gonna put it all together. If embeddings are meant to be the numerical representation of a specific meaning, how can you have one token and thus one embedding when there are words with multiple meanings? For example, you can train your dog or you can take the midnight train. Going anywhere. In each of these sentences, how do we as humans understand what train means, context. The meaning of words is often dependent on the words that surround them. When you see the word she in this sentence, how do you know what she is referring to? Context. Well, LLMs 
pay attention to context too. Tokens only ever point to one embedding, and it's, it's just a starting point. Then looking at the words surrounding the embedding, the model updates it to a more context sensitive representation. So we get a new embedding based on the context. I need to pause here for a second because I want you to remember that even though we're talking about language, machines only understand numbers. That initial token embedding often doesn't really mean anything, all right? It's just numbers. It's also not an average between the two meanings of a given word. More specifically, embeddings are just the vectors that have proven to be most useful, right, on average across training data, in helping the model predict surrounding words. This expands our notion of what an embedding is. Earlier, we described them as sets of numbers that represent things like words. But this is so much more. You see, deep learning experts understand that language is not simply the amalgamation of isolated chunks of meaning. It's the relationship between those chunks of meaning that make it language. What I'm trying to say is this, embeddings don't store meaning. They map where those meanings sit in relation to one another. And if that's not poetry, I don't know what is. There is uh, so much more that I could say about tokens, but I think this is a, a good stopping point for now. Uh, if you wanna learn more about the process of tokenization, or you know how do these models handle typos, or uh, made up words, or slang, or something like that, let me know, and uh, maybe I can expand on this video a little bit. With that being said, if you have specific topics that you would like to see me cover, uh, often related to deep learning, machine learning, AI, all that nonsense. Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, I'll shut up now and I'll let you go. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.